Hello YouTube, here I've got an MSI Apache Pro GE70 2PE. Um, this is one of the latest MSI laptops you can get out there. It costs $1,100, again from MSI. It's a pretty good mid-range gaming laptop. Uh, to start off, the specs are a 17.3 inch 1080p screen, which is a pretty pretty big compared to most other gaming laptops out there. Um, and in, an Intel Core i5 4200H processor, that's a 2.8 gigahertz. Um, Haswell, which is the latest series, and NVIDIA GeForce GTX 860M, 2GB graphics card, uh, 8 gigs of DDR3 memory, and a 1TB 5400 RPM hard drive. Now it also features Windows, Windows 8.1, which is kind of an upside or a downside depending on how you look at it. Um, so I'm just going to do kind of a basic overview of it, on my general opinions. And By the way, this isn't mine, it's actually my friend's, but I'm doing an overview on it. Um, I am also going to make some light comparisons to my Lenovo IdeaPad Y510P because it's a pretty, it's another pretty standard gaming laptop out there, and there are some differences that um, are good to show for contrast. So to get down to it, it has a pretty nice exterior design. I thought I'd mention that first. It has a nice kind of uh, indentation to the top, and the MSI logo, as you can see, a uh, little red band of color that runs around the outside. It's got um it's actually got a DVD drive which is pretty interesting for most gaming laptops nowadays or most computers in general. Uh, most like my Wi Fi 10P do not have DVD drives. It has a couple USB 2.0s on this side as well as a an Ethernet and VGA um, port. It's pretty standard. On the other side, you've got one USB 3.0 which my mouse is plugged into. Um, audio in and out. Oh, excuse me, it has two USB 3.0s. Um, audio in and out, an SD card slot, and of course the charging port. Now, uh, one thing that's kind of interesting about this is that it only has one fan ejection port. I guess it's kind of, uh, well, it's not that odd, because my, my laptop has two, because it has two video cards, but this one only has one, so, yeah. Um, so opening it up, you realize that the, the backlight is actually one of the coolest things about this. It's not on right now, I don't know why not, <laughs> but uh, there we go. Yeah, it's multicolored. I'll talk about that in a little, in a little bit more depth later. So yeah, as I mentioned before, the screen's pretty big, especially compared to that guy right there. And the border is pretty small, which is a pretty important well, feature to me at least. I don't know about much of anyone else. Um, so overall, the, the design's pretty nice. It looks pretty good. It's not huge and clunky. It's uh, Well, it's got big screen size, but it's got a pretty nice design to it as well. Now the trackpad is something that's kind of worth mentioning because uh, it's not the greatest. Um, my Lenovo's isn't the greatest either, but uh, this one's eh, it's okay. I noticed that whenever you plug a mouse in, it automatically disables the trackpad. I don't know if you can change that. It's probably in some settings somewhere, but I really don't know. But the trackpad, when you are using it by itself, I noticed that it's kind of... I mean, it doesn't feel that bad to touch, just that there's a little bit of a delay with it. I know you can't see when I'm using it, but there's a little bit of a delay with how it moves, and it's kind of... A, Eh, not that bad, but it's kind of a nuisance at first. Once you get used, before you get used to it, I mean. Uh, but as far as the clicking goes, is actually pretty, pretty, pretty solid in the clicking aspect of things. Just that it does have a little bit of that delay. Now, it has a variety of function keys on the keyboard. Now, that's one small feature that's actually pretty important to people like me. Uh, you can change the brightness and audio levels from right there as long as you're holding the function key, which is pretty useful. It also has keys to put on airplane mode, which I assume turns Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, whatever else off. You can uh, shut it, you can put it to sleep, I mean. Disable the trackpad, we'll toggle it's disabling on and off. I'll put it on eco mode, whatever that is, and connect to an external display. But I don't think it has the ability to, to, um, to shut the display off. And it doesn't have media keys either, which allow you to pause and play music. But the, uh, this, this, button right here, the P1, the F, the F4, uh, appears to just start up the MSI Gaming Center application, which is kind of, I don't know, whatever. Um, I'll go into how it performs in a second, but I'm going to go over some little more buttons and stuff. Um, now, I think the keyboard is one of the coolest things about this laptop. It has four or five different modes that you can change by pressing the rightmost button at the top left of the keyboard. Um, the most default setting is where it kind of fades from pink to purple to blue left to right, which is pretty cool. And that has another setting where it fades uh, fades in and out blue, kind of like a pulsing effect, um, which is pretty neat as well. The next effect is where it fades in through different colors kind of across the keyboard. I think that looks very cool as well. 
and the next setting is where it's all the same color but fades all simultaneously. All different parts of the keyboard fade simultaneously. Um, now as far as performance goes, I'll make a little bit of an overview on that in a sec, but I noticed that the speakers on this are kind of, they're okay, they're not the best. Uh, I don't have any music to play for you guys right now, but um, they're not the most bassy speakers. I mean, well, recording with my camera here, uh, you wouldn't really get that good of a sense of how the bass sounds, but it, it it's not very good. I think my Lenovo's are a little bit better. Those feature JBL speakers, where these are uh, Dyna, Dyna Audio, which I've never heard of, so yeah, that probably explains it. Um, and yeah, they're, they're okay. They're not that great. Um, I wouldn't really use them for people who are really, really, really into listening to high-quality music, but you know, you can get headphones and external speakers for that if you really want. Now, as far as the gaming goes, it does pretty well. I've tested it out with Counter-Strike Global Offensive. It seems to do the trick pretty nicely. Um, one important thing to note, though, is at the top left here next to the backlight button, you've got a button that increases the fan speeds, which is actually pretty uh, pretty important to consider when you're gaming, because I, I recorded the temperatures, and they did get up kind of high. They got up to 85 degrees Celsius with that um, extra fan speed there. Which is pretty hot. Not so hot that the computer's gonna kill itself, I don't think, because my Lenovo's got up to 100, but um, it is still pretty, pretty hot. Uh, but my frame rates are looking pretty good right now. They're about 100 or so, maxed out settings in CSGO, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I'll also do some other gameplay for you with some other games to show how well they run them. But I think overall, you're not really gonna see any huge issues with this laptop's performance. Um, I think it's pretty good. Obviously, it's not like, you know, top of the line or anything, but it's 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 pretty good, certainly, I'd say. So we're running Far Cry 3 here. It does pretty well. Um, there's a bunch of different graphic settings you can choose, um, including, like, high, very high, and then have ultra. I'm on very high, which is, you know, the second highest setting. It runs pretty well. I'd say around, and yeah, it dips to 30 or 40 FPS every now and then, but it's, it's not too bad. It's, it's good enough. So, um... Yeah, normally I'd do a little bit more of a graphics-intensive uh, game like Metro Last Light, but I don't have it downloaded, and <laughs> my internet, don't get me started. But anyway, oh uh, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty happy. Um, it's running Far Cry 3 pretty nice on very high settings. I'd say, yeah, again, 30, 40 plus FPS. Uh, probably gets up to, well, easily over 60 quite often, so. Yep, that's a little bit more perspective for you. Another important thing to mention is that this laptop does have expandability for an SSD. It has an M SATA port uh, on the motherboard. You have, to, you have to take the case off there to get to it, uh, which is a very, very good upgrade for anyone who wants to really get some speed out of this thing. Who's willing to spend between you know 75 and 150 bucks on a solid state driver? Probably even more than 150. Some of them can cost, but that's not the point. Um, because the 5400 RPM hard drive is a little bit slow on the speed side. I can do a boot up test in a separate video, but this thing is a little bit slow to start up. It's not the fastest, but once it starts up and gets going, the speed seems to be absolutely fine. Um, but with an SSD, I, I am almost sure that it would significantly increase boot time and game loading times would probably be a little bit better, you know, by a few seconds or so. Um, so that option is there for people who want to take advantage of it. So overall, I think this laptop is a very solid buy. I would definitely recommend getting it. Um, it seems pretty good. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is the battery life isn't the greatest, but that's to be expected with all laptops. It's about the same as my Lenovo. It's about two, three hours max of basic use. So, um, yeah, but it stacks up pretty well against most other laptops, including my Lenovo. Um, it's pretty similar in some ways, um, but I think for the price, it's a very, very solid laptop considering its cost. Um, my Lenovo costs. 1300 base and I put another hundred into it and upgrade so um, yeah that's one thing but um, I think this laptop's really really good it has a lot of upgradability like I mentioned with the SSD um, but the uh, the GTX 860 is a pretty solid uh, graphics card that will not let you down at all um, other laptops like the Wi-Fi 510p feature um, two GT 750Ms but um, usually it's better to go without SLI because that's like cause problems as I've seen but Anyway, in, in, actual, in actual conclusion, I think this is a very solid laptop for a very good price. If you're looking to buy it, I would recommend doing so. So that's all for this video. Thank you guys for watching.